going to be the applications involved with it. And we're going to get away from the 68, 95, 99.7 rule and talk about what happens if our values fall in between these and also how do we come up with these numbers associated with any data set. Well, to do that, we're going to use this neat little formula down here. This is called a z-score formula. So we'll get z equals a data point, some value that you're given, minus the mean, uh, x bar is the mean, divided by the standard deviation. That's what s represents. And if you notice, if we know that, um, let's say for instance, uh, we know that the av or um, my height is maybe 69 inches, and the average height of men is about 69 inches, that you get 69 minus 69, which gives you zero, which represents the mean on this curve. If we have a standard deviation of three units then, uh, let's say we have a 69 average height and we go up three inches, that would bring me to 72 inches, and my standard deviation is three inches, then you get 72 minus 69 is 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that represents one standard deviation above the mean. So this formula works out rather well. And that's what we're going to use to plot all data on the same curve over and over again. And because it's going on the same curve, there's a lot of stuff that I know about it and what's going on. Now in your books, there's this table. It's in chapter 12.5. And I just wanted to show you how to read this table. So I'm going to pick some z value. Let's say we pick negative 0.8. Um, to get used to this table, I would highly suggest you know just drawing a little sketch of the normal curve. Negative 0.8, eh, it's someplace around here. And the way this table works is it takes all the values or all the possibilities or the percentage of everything that lies below negative 0.8. So if we go to the table at negative 0.8, which is, uh, you know, the z-scores will be in one column, and these percentiles, this going to the left bit, is in the other column. So at negative 0.8, our percentile is 21.19. So that means there's 21.19% of the data will be less than a z-score of negative 0.8. And that's all this table reads as. So let me just do another one, another example of a different part of the normal table. And I'm just going to pick, uh, pick the z-scores between 1.2 and 1.6 and kind of blow them up all over here to the side. So these are the z-scores, and these are the percentiles associated with each one of those z-scores. So if we're looking at, say, oh, 1.5, we can come down here to the graph and plot approximately, it doesn't have to be perfect, 1.5, and the way the table works is it takes all of the percentages of what's below 1.5, so that becomes what's known as a percentile. So the percentile associated with 1.5 is 93.32 percent of the data lies below 1.5. Now if I want to know what percentage of the data lies above 1.5, all I would want is um, from 1.5 in this direction. To get that part, we would have to take 100%, the entire curve, and subtract away that 93.32. So this table gives us both directions. It's just you have to do a calculation to go to the right. So if you're going to the left, you just take the number off the table. If you're going to the right, you have to subtract the number from the table from 100. All right. So let's do an uh, example. We have here a recent study found that the average weight of rats to be oh, 275 grams with a standard deviation of 15 grams. And I want to find what percent of rats weigh between 250 and 280 grams. Now these numbers here, they're not the mean, they're not the standard deviation, so these must be data points. So we're going to call them x. And since there's two of them, we're going to talk about x1 and x2, just to keep them straight. So that means I need to find two z-scores. Notice I already have this set up. So I'm going to be looking for a z1 and a z2 associated with an x1 and an x2. And we're just going to plug in the numbers that are associated. So we're going to have a fraction. x1 is 250 grams. And then we get this x-bar. Now x-bar is just the mean or average. 
and the average is 275 grams. So that'll go here. And we're going to take these, this difference and divide by the standard deviation. And the standard deviation happens to be 15 grams. So we type this into our calculator and see what we get. Now to get this answer, make sure you type in the top numbers first, hit equals, then divide by 15. You should be getting negative 1.67. Alright, let's do it again down here for Z, Z2 using X2. X2 is the 280 grams. And we're going to subtract away the mean, which is 275. And we're going to divide by the standard deviation, which is 15. All right, so 280 minus 275 divided by 15. And this one becomes positive 0.33. All right, so we need to look up these two values on the Z table and see what happens with them. So before I do that, though, let me go and plot these on here. So let's see, we've got negative 1.67 and 0.33. Now negative 0.67 is right about here, negative 0.67, and 0.33 is right about here. And we want to know how many rats weigh between point, this negative 0.33 and this negative, I'm sorry, the positive 0.33 and the negative 0.67. So I'm looking for the percentage of rats that fall in this region here. Now the normal curve table does not take into account between two numbers. It only works um, the normal table only works if you start here and go to the left. So we'll have this percentage or percentile related to the negative 0.67 and we'll have another percentile related to the 0.33. And notice the table always goes to the left. Now if we look at just the portion of the table that is of interest, um, the first number I want to look at is negative 0.67. And you'll notice that the table doesn't have negative 0.67 precisely, so you're going to have to pick the number that it's closest to. It lies somewhere between negative 0.7 and negative 0.65, but it is actually closer to negative 0.65. So the percentile that's associated with that is going to be 2578. So this one will give me 25.78% of the information is less than negative 0.67. All right, the other number we're going to be looking up is 0.33. And 0.33 is somewhere between 0.30 and 0.35, but it actually is closer to 0.35. So the number associated with that, the percentile, is 63.68, so 63.68 percent. Now we want what's in between these two in here, this region, and if you look at it the right way, all I have to do is take away all the purple from the red and I'm left with this portion down here. Um, let's make that line kind of a yellowish color, and that's the portion I want. So all I need to do is take these two numbers and subtract them. So this becomes 63.68. We're going to take away the 25.78 that we found from the tables for these two numbers. We're going to subtract them. I want to keep the answer positive, so I'll, I will always do bigger minus small. And this tells us that this is going to be 37.9% of the information between these two z values. So that's going to be the answer to my question. The percent of rats that weigh between 250 and 280 grams will be 37.9% of the rats will weigh between those two weights. And that'll answer my question. And that's it. It's not that bad.